Hi, it's Adam the Hip Nerd, and today's show and tell is... The CNC Halftone Family Portrait! Back in 2012, I did my first halftone programming project. Using a custom program I wrote, I made this halftone image out of a picture of our late cat Kitsy sitting next to my wife Julie while she's reading Bill Clinton's autobiography in bed. I printed it out on multiple sheets of paper and taped them together. It's been hanging on our wall ever since. Now it's wrinkled and sagging and it's torn in places, so I decided to remake it as a CNC'd halftone. I started with a section of the image as a test of the various physical and digital parameters. definitely making very loud junk noises when it was cutting this. So I think um, I think the cut's too aggressive. So I'm going to go ahead and modify the code and um, print the second half of this test with a less aggressive uh, feed rate and see if that improves things. I might also see what the depth of these is supposed to be and make my depth a little less than this maximum because this tear out's not good. I don't want that. Um, the maximum should kind of look closer to this. By the way, these um, these cuts are supposed to be kind of square, but they still look pretty round to me. So um, maybe I'll try and modify my code to make them a little more square or see what else I can do. Um, so, progress. Says progress to do 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 progress to do do progress to do 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 progress to do do P R O G R E S S progress. Once I realized my mistake calculating the corners, the pixels really started looking square. Then I figured out that I needed to carve out the center and then cut from each corner to the center to make everything look even. Thank you. 
test proved that I could get consistent and accurate pixels. Time to move on. I decided to use a half inch sheet of MDF. I was concerned about weight since this is going to hang on my wall, but the next thickness down was quarter inch and to get the size pixels I wanted, I needed to cut almost exactly a quarter inch deep. I decided to use a French cleat for hanging and in the end, weight wasn't an issue. I laid out the area of the image in the center of the sheet. Taping out the area gave me clean edges to work from, making it easier to locate the starting position and later for cutting out the finished piece. I painted on a couple of coats of this sanding sealer. The project sat in this state for a while due to life circumstances, and during that time I started to have doubts about the idea of redoing the Kitsy Julie Bill picture. I have a natural aversion to revisiting old projects. I like the picture enough that it's been hanging on my living room wall for eight years, but it's been done. And honestly, the inclusion of Bill Clinton on this picture hanging in my living room has always been a bit controversial, and more political than I intended. Also, I think it conveyed a fan status that doesn't actually exist. I decided that I wanted to memorialize this historic time, the way my family is right now during this time of pandemic and social change. So I changed the picture. I ran a test on the feeds and speeds to optimize for cutting MDF. All the testing was done on plywood and MDF can be cut quicker. The end result was a nice clean, relatively fast cut. When I loaded the G-code, I ran into a problem that would come back to bite me even though I thought I had it resolved. The procedurally generated G-code file was relatively large, too large for the Maslow's ground control program to handle. It took a long time to load, 
but when I hit start, nothing would happen. The solution was to cut the image into smaller pieces and make sure the starting points were all relative to each other, so I cut it into quarters. some reason the program just stopped. I'm not sure what that WPOS000 means, um, but it's definitely not finished. I had to stop and start so many times during testing that I came up with the idea to put comments in the g-code with the whole number at the beginning of each whole sequence. That way I could calculate the starting line number in the G-code and jump to it using the GoTo feature in Ground Control. It wouldn't restart at first, then I cleared the G-code, quit and restarted Ground Control, and then reloaded the file. It started going again, but this was warning number two. Doing a safety inspection this morning, I discovered that this rail has slipped out a little bit. Fortunately, it did not come out all the way, and I don't think it affected anything on the final product here. But I gotta move this rail back into position, get this tightened up. Things tend to rattle loose, so it's a good thing to do a safety inspection on kind of a regular basis. Um, I probably waited way too long. That shouldn't have happened. But, uh, at least I'm doing it now.
You can't see it on the time lapse, and I didn't have any other cameras rolling. But what happens here is that when I go to try to start cutting again, I ran into the same problem as when the machine had stalled earlier. This time though, when I got it moving again, it started going to the start position, but the bit was down, and I didn't double check the z-axis height, even though I have a warning right above the computer reminding me to do just that. 